today we'll uh, have a brief uh, uh, talk on cochlear implants and uh, we'll understand how it works and uh, who all uh, are ideal candidates to undergo cochlear implant so before we uh, uh, right away jump into what is cochlear implant uh, uh, we need to understand how a normal person hears so uh, for any person who is uh, wanting to get a cochlear implant done we need to understand how it works so uh, normally our ear this is the external ear we have something called as a middle ear then we have the inner ear which is called the cochlea so now when we hear sounds the sounds come to the ear the sounds are collected by the external ear amplified and then transmitted to the middle ear the middle ear which further amplifies the sound into the inner ear now this inner ear have small hair cells so now this small hair cells will transduce or basically convert these vibrational energy into electrical energy and send to the cochlear nerve which further goes into our brain now this is how a person hears the sound now what happens is sometimes in cases where there is cochlear injury that is the inner ear injury or sometimes these hair cells which were responsible to convert this mechanical sounds into energy that is electrical stimuli are damaged when the child is born itself now these are the individuals who we categorize into sensory neural hearing loss basically the sensory organ itself is damaged now these people what we can do is first we need to assess how good the hearing is how the severity of hearing is so we run a set of uh, battery of uh, audiological evaluation we see what type of hearing loss it is how much is the hearing loss and whether there is any benefit by giving a conventional hearing aid now only those candidates who don't benefit with conventional hearing aids are the candidates for cochlear implants so as i mentioned there are two sets of people who have hearing loss one is a newborn a child who is born deaf and those who have acquired this deafness so in both the categories we have cochlear implant which is going to benefit these people in children it plays a more crucial role because the same hearing which is damaged or which is not developed is responsible for the delay in the speech as well basically if the child is not hearing the child doesn't know what to speak so now this needs to be addressed at a young age because our brain is shown to have a certain limited time frame before which the language skill develops now if we miss this golden opportunity of this particular uh, six years of uh, early uh, childhood we tend to not develop the speech or language now that is why now it is implemented a newborn child as soon as the child is born we do the small testing called as photoacoustic emission oae now this will pick up the likely kids who are going to have hearing loss now these kids can get further evaluation to confirm the hearing loss and if found to have hearing loss which is not benefited with hearing aid then we can do something that is cochlear implant for adults as well those who have lost the hearing after some incident like some viral infection some ear infection or some uh, uh, trauma a fall or uh, due to uh, any loud noise exposure something which is uh, frequently happening these days the trend of using ear pods and uh, earphone users now people tend to put loud music to the ear for a prolonged duration of time as per who that is the world health organization they have set a certain limit for the hearing using the new gadget or the smart gadgets so they say you can use up to 1 hour in a limited volume so the more higher the volume is you have to use it lesser so that's how the uh, things about the smart devices are but these days we are misusing it and uh, people tend to develop hearing loss at a very early age as compared to our ancestors now in these kind of people who are now profoundly deaf or those who are not benefited with hearing aid now always the question arises now the hearing aid is not functioning anymore for me what do i do now so there is always an option of a further advanced technology which is cochlear implant now for both the newborn as well as acquired cases the cochlear implant surgery is the same and it is a safe surgery so in this surgery basically we uh, perform a small incision behind the ear 
and we place her internal processor which is the component which is going to sit inside the inner ear the cochlea and there is an external processor which has to be kept over the skin overlying the internal device now usually this process is a time consuming process and we need to be patient enough to go through this process so once the surgery is done we need to give time for the tissues to heal and after the tissues have healed we start or the switch on the device from the day of switch on the person or the child starts to hear sounds so after the surgery uh, we give time for the tissues to heal and once the healing has happened we put a external device and we switch on now with the switch on we need to understand the person is not going to hear it to the full potential of the device so for a child we need to Add, uh, give time for the child to adapt to this new sensation which the child has never heard before so usually we start with a very minimal tone and slowly as the child adapts to the sound we bring the device to its full potential now as a child is born we know it usually takes one to one and a half years to child to develop speech in a normal scenario also in the same way the day we switch on i consider the child is born so from that time we give intensive speech therapies and accordingly the child will develop speech so it is a process wherein the parents have to be patient and parents have to sit with the child undergo the speech therapies initially it will be more intensive then as the child we find that child is starting to understand the speech it then we can be little lax and we do it once in 6 months and so on but this is a continuous learning process for adults it is again the same way but it is slightly bit more easier because the adults have a well developed auditory system and a well developed brain which has already heard the new uh, already heard the sounds so now for adult when we switch on although the same previous uh, auditory perception have been there this is something new now the person is hearing through this new bionic hearing technology so it takes time again for the adult to adapt to this new method of hearing so for them also we need to give hearing uh, training we'll uh, adjust the uh, machine according to the need for the patient and then after a certain period of time the person can get the full potential of the device now uh, there are certain questions which uh, many of the parents or the many of the patients are apprehensive about Uh, is the surgery safe as i told before it is a very safe surgery which has uh, stood the test of time so it has been performed over the last 30 years and the technology has been ever growing and the benefits also uh, with this device has also improved a lot uh, now uh, the speech perception speech discrimination and the uh, music perception are also made possible with cochlear implants now the second thing is uh, how long the device will function as far as we know uh, even the earliest devices are still functioning uh, there are definitely some glitches with the technology sometimes the device may not function in those cases we do uh, uh, revision implants and we change the implant and put a new implant and this person can continue to hear with the new implant as well so there's no uh, worries regarding the safety and the outcomes of the device because it is well proved and uh, something which lot of people are enjoying the benefit of uh, now the other questions which frequently they ask is uh, whether it will affect the child's health in any other manner of course it is not going to affect it is a proven safe device it is not going to uh, affect your brain or the inner ear itself for the matter of fact that these device have been shown to be very safe and it does not damage the inner ear or the brain or the general health of the patient in any manner so uh, it is something which a person can undergo without any fear uh, only thing it is little time consuming and uh, it requires little effort from both the patient or the parents to find the total uh, or the full potential of the device so i hope uh, uh, it's little uh, informative uh, uh, from our side uh, to all those people who are uh, thinking about cochlear implants uh, with this we'll conclude the video thank you Thank you.